episode 12 of the Muncie Music Scene podcast, the last one for this season. Pretty excited about the guests that I have. I feel like it's been a couple, fucking year, a couple years since I've seen you. Yeah, it feels it's been like. a little while. And I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Scott Rubel. I play drums in Necropagus and I do vocals in Legion. All right, man. Uh, which one came first, Necro or Legion? Um, Necrophagus came first. As a matter of fact, I mean, I know we're still not active, but we are not disbanded. Uh, yesterday, May 28th, is our 28th year anniversary. So we're Jesus. still a band. We're still a band, even though we're not active. So, yeah, yesterday marks our 28th year. 28 years. We started May 28th, 1993. Well, actually, Necrophagus was a little bit before me and Lindell joined. Yeah. Uh, there, I am the second drummer in the band. The See, first, I didn't know that. Uh, the first drummer was named Chris Rawlings. And I've heard that just, name from other people. Yeah, he jammed, they, he jammed with Mikey and Jeremy and a uh, dude named Eric Loughner back in the early day before I even met him. Mer met Jeremy and Mikey. And, uh, and uh, I had to learn one song before we started writing mm -hmm. for all of us, and that was a song called Servants of the Unholy. <laughs> and uh, that was the first song I learned. And then we wrote our very, we wrote our very first song on our first day we ever got together, which was Pile of Rotting Flesh, and that song is officially 28 years old. <laughs> but, uh, how does that make you feel thinking 28 years, man? Makes me feel old as shit, but it's... I, I dig it, and music has always been my thing, and, uh... You yeah. don't look much different from when I saw you the first time 20 years ago, except you got some grays, and I, I'm just old, dude. <laughs> Jaded by life and just trying to keep it rolling. Man. Hell, man. Oh, that's about all we can do anymore. So, I'm yeah. pretty sure Legion's coming up on 30. That's, years. yeah, that's what Dave and I talked about when I had him. Um, so, you're going Necro 28 years. How long have you been in Legion? I joined Legion in September of 2004. So, I'm coming up on. 17 years, if I'm doing my math right, coming up on 17, and I love it, dude, I, it's nice, it's nice because Necrophagus is like a physical release, yeah. when I'm behind the drones, it's like a pure physical release, and when I'm up on stage with Legion, it's my mental mm -hmm. release, because I'm yelling and screaming my head off and growling, and it's just like all that pressure goes away, and it's just like, oh. Then I can sleep for three days afterwards. <laughs> Especially now we're getting older. Um, with Necro at the beginning, uh, you guys Muncie based or yeah, we we practiced out at Mikey's dad's house and uh, out in the county somewhere. I don't want to give it away, but we had practice at Mikey's yeah. dad's house. And you don't have to get like straight books. <laughs> Go to this address. Yeah, you know. we were right here. <laughs> but um, we had a big barn to jam in, and we just, and in the early days, we jammed at least four or five days a week just because it's like, hmm. we're just, it's awesome. And like, how I met Jeremy and Mikey was, I, after my ninth grade year, I transferred to Callen High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where I met Scott Lindell. And my, bud, uh, my buddy, named Chris Noter, and Chris introduced me to the girl I dated, which, which her name was Beth, and Beth knew Jeremy and Mikey. Nice. And, well, they, these guys jam in a band, and I was like, yeah, I mean, Lindell, you know. Mm -hmm. and I was like, what do they play? Well, Mikey plays bass, and Jeremy plays guitar. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and Lindell plays guitar, so he and I play drums. I was like, we've got to get with these dudes, and we met, we met at a show uh, Legion, Anthropophagy, and Subconscious was playing, and we was just like, we didn't even know this music existed here. In Muncie. Yeah, death metal's here in Muncie. This is, uh, yeah, we gotta do this. And the four of us got together out of Mikey's barn and we wrote Pile of Rotting Flesh, and then learned 
servants of an unholy, and we fucking we just started cranking out tunes. We didn't we we didn't find our groove. Mm -hmm. We were playing our first show three weeks after we formed, and that was with uh, yeah. We had seven songs in three weeks, and Todd Jackson's band, Thirty Five Q Tips, <laughs> with uh, Billy West and uh, I like that name and uh, Josh Codwell and. Uh, yeah, you guys want to play? We're yeah. only three weeks in. <laughs> sure, why not? And we played at the when it was the Flying Tomato. That's that venue's been a very common theme with talking with Kendrick, talking with Pat, Dave. That place was so fun. I'm playing on a middle story of a floor, or, you know, a, you know, yeah, above people. And like, All right, right, cool, you know, but we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> And, but we went ahead and did it anyway. He was still in vocals at that time. Jeremy and Mikey. Right. All right. Jeremy, he, yeah. Jeremy was doing it more than Mikey was, but they kind of traded off. Mm -hmm. But so the fun. first Necro was a four piece. Yes, first Necro was a four piece. We recorded our first demo in October of '93, and by that time we had nine songs. And we got offered, hey, you know, this dude in Indy records band. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember how much money we spent doing it, but we, we broke it up over weekends because everybody's work schedule. And uh, we should have done probably four or five songs, but we went ahead and did all nine. And uh, <laughs> that's brave for a first album. <sighs> yeah, but it was still a good time. We had fun doing it. That's when we were still learning what we were, you know, doing, mm -hmm. and we, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, we hadn't found our complete groove. Yeah. And then, uh, well, we did that and released, we released it back in March of 94, on a bunch of, we got a bunch of cassettes made, but before that, I'll just knock the mic, no, I think I was right there, uh, that's fuck it up. No, you're good. Um, <laughs> we got Jason Ballmer in 93, December of 93. I was and, wondering when he came in. Yeah, he came in in December. And uh, we had the first demo with just the four of us. We released it in 94, and we played at the Student Center with uh, Skeletal Earth. <sighs> uh, Anthropophagy might have been there, too. But, you know, it's Jason's first show with our first demo without him on it. But we, had, we went to another show, and I think Subconscious was playing again. We all met there, and we're just like, our stuff is weak. We need to up our game. And after listening to them dudes, because they're all ching, 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 and it's just like, dude, this is fucking sick. And we're just, we need to up our game, man. And that's when we started writing shit for Forever Lost. Mm -hmm. And like our transition from the first demo into where we were heading was a uh, pathological development and uh, pregurgitation. <laughs> we were kids. We, you know, yeah. it's like, hey, that sounds that's right before you puke, right? Fuck <laughs> okay, it, let's just do it that, you know. Yeah, and uh, that was kind of our transition songs. Damn it, uh, our transition good. songs <laughs> before we started finding a hitting our group mm -hmm. and it's like then we got forever lost bomber came up with the beat for forever lost the dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. and damn jay that's fucking awesome so we can incorporate in that and i think that was one of our most brutal two and a half minute songs we had written at the time and then we started heading towards cerebral necrophilia and then we just everything just there we were finding our shit we were finding it and i remember cerebral necrophilia and we were really influenced by like Morbid Angel at the time. And I think that was around the time Covenant came out and Domination was that dude. That's mm. And here in Peak Sand, while putting little and we working on I was like, fuck, that's fucking cool. So I'm gonna, you I'm know, gonna like, got my drumming to this. And yeah, and was just, all right, now we're kind of starting to find our shit. And then, what did we do after that? Uh, we just kept getting our shit tight and getting our shit tight and then uh, 
we went and, and recorded a little three song EP and I don't even know if it ever saw the light of day but we, we recorded with a dude named Joe Blastic at the same place we recorded the first demo and uh, why did this EP come out? I don't I don't remember but we recorded man I mean it's been almost three decades it's, <laughs> um, we recorded Condemned to Isolation uh, uh, Resurrected to Die and uh, what's the other one? Uh, anyway those three songs ended up on Disgust yeah, we just re-recorded I, I was like and Resurrected to Die you're a necro fan that and like strategy of tragedy and uh, those are songs that like are like stuck in your head uh, and what was the other one that's gonna bug me until i think of it <laughs> but anyway the those three songs ended up on disgusted and uh we didn't record disgusted until after we got back from florida so we had enslaved before Disgusted, which had four songs mm -hmm. on it, and, uh, and then uh, we had a pretty good arsenal of music ready to go, and when we moved to, we moved to um, Florida for a year, year and a half, and... What brought that move up? Uh, we just wanted to try something different. I know, like, Florida had a good death metal scene, man, and but uh, we landed we heavyweights, you know. Dude, I'm telling you, and we... We got to play with, uh, in Ebor City, we got to play with uh, Monstrosity and DSI, and, um, man, it was an all-day festival, and there was probably 13, 14 bands that started early mm -hmm. and ended at night, and we were somewhere in the middle, so we had a good show. Yeah, oh, yeah. All right, right, yeah. And that was a good show, and then we played in Tampa a few times. We, we played with Dying Fetus, and, um, one one memory that really sticks out was this was on videotape and somehow Mikey recorded over it. Oh, <laughs> um, we were playing uh, we were playing at the Brass Mug and Corpse Grinder, uh, Jack Owen, and Pat O'Brien were there watching us and we're just like, oh my god, holy shit! And so I'm death metal heavyweights right and there. George just standing there, yeah. right there you know. <laughs> and and we were we happened to be video recording that at the time and there you see him on the camera and Jeremy's like we'd like to thank everybody for coming out corpse grinder and he just kind of went <laughs> and, and Jack and Pat and the fact that even just the beer race <laughs> <and the> knowledge <laughs> it was man, awesome. man. and it was cool because we we've, we've seen them I've seen them at least five times yeah. and it was just cool for them be watching that. I've only seen Corpse twice, but it's still... Oh, it was so fun. And we got it all on tape, and then somehow Mikey recorded over it. And we're just like, no. Fuck you, Mikey! Oh, Shout no. out there. <laughs> I love you, Mikey. <laughs> but that was a good time. And Florida was fun, but man, it's, it's hard to live down there if you don't have money to start with. Mm. And it, to get in there and to get a you guys were still young at that time too that was back in 97 uh we had been well like four or five years mm -hmm. and we was just like let's just try it yeah. you know there's nothing wrong with seeing what happens uh, my mom lived down there and me and scotty took off first mm -hmm. and we took over the apartment they used to live in my, my mom and stepdad I used to live in and they got a house and me and Lindell took the apartment over mm. which left it open for the rest of everybody to yeah. come down and five dudes living in an apartment well uh <laughs> jeremy mikey and jeremy's sister amy all got there she came down too and uh they got their separate place but i think we went down in april of 97 and everybody started heading back in the middle of 98 because it was just financially hard yeah the cost and, of living alone even at that time was the difference between muncie and florida like everything is very tourist mm -hmm. related there so it was really hard to even save anything but i mean we got some good shows out of it and i was the last one to come back i came back on december uh, christmas day of 98 and then it wasn't long after that we started playing you know 
show, and we played up at Stevie Ray's when it was the little dinky place up there in Ball State campus. It was on the second floor. Yeah. And that's gone through a lot of names, too. It's hard to keep up with different names that have been there through campus. Dude. And I, when that was the first show we played, as you know, as we got back in that place, it was packed. Mm. I'm like, oh my god. It was like, well, they played the PSI. They must have done something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we do, but we're still the same dudes, yeah. you know. And it was still a fun time. That was, it was nice. It was everybody was, it was seven thousand degrees in there, and, <laughs> but it was still a good time. I, my first memory of seeing the copy of this was like my first show I went to that I distinctly remember. It was in like '99. It was the summer of '99. And I was playing at, at Eakin Park with my friends, and I heard Is that the cabin. Yeah, I, oh I heard loud ass music coming from a cabin, and I looked at my buddy that I was with because I had I have a really awesome mom, and uh, give you a little backstory on that. You know when Corpse was in Ace Ventura. Yeah, I remember being like mind fucking blown yeah dude that was like, i was like i was like this this kind of music exists like there's people that sound like that and it's that like fast and just like in your face and i remember telling my mom like oh, i want to listen to that and she was like yeah you might be a little young for that but she was like i'll look into it you know i ended up with a couple tapes here and there different bands but fast forward a little bit when i heard that shit coming out of the cabin was it the one by the basketball court yeah oh yeah I heard that shit coming out of the cabin, and I told my buddy, I was like, that sounds like the shit I have on tape. And he was like, well, let's walk over there. And we pretty much just stood outside, but we listened. And I remember just feeling hooked. Anytime I was at Heaton Park and heard music, I would wander up to the cabin, like... Oh, and the PA was messed up that night, and I had my... Uh, I had my bass drum stuck because I had my D drum triggers mm -hmm. on them, and for some reason they just quit working. And so everybody's on mic, but my bass drums are still packed. Mm -hmm. and you couldn't even hear. And I didn't, didn't want to stop and yeah, you know, and try pack to... everything just so <clears throat> so it'd be louder. And I was like, let's just play through it, you know, <laughs> even though you can't hear them. We still did. Yeah. It was still a good time. I don't, I don't think there was a lot of people there, but I, I, I remember bits and pieces. I was a little kid with a bowl cut hanging out outside. <laughs> <laughs> and it was in 99? I think so. It was 99, 2000. The, okay. It was one of those summers. Yeah, I've drank a lot since then. Well, like, my memory's kind of foggy. But I re the thing is, I remember the cabin, and I remember it being right around that time, 99, 2000. I don't even remember who played with anybody else that day. I just, like I said, I remember just playing with my buddies and hearing music and just stumbling up. I ended up seeing a couple other bands that summer and the, fo and the following couple of summers there play. Uh, I don't know if you know who Austin Glidden is. He played in a, I want to say, they were called like London's Burning? or. I'd have to see a face. I'm better remember yeah. faces. Yeah, uh, I saw him when I was a kid playing Eakin Park shows. I saw obviously Necro there. Uh, probably a few other bands that I can't ever remember the name of because how young I was at the time. And I just knew that that helped get me hooked That's what got into, you into local music. So with Necro around that time, you said you came back in '98. I came back in 98. I was the last one to come back. And uh, You guys went right back at it in 99? Just right there? Oh, the yeah. Beginning. It was just right. It did once, I don't even remember where, uh, where we set up to start jamming again. And why don't we might have went back out to Mikey's dad's. i say that was 20 years ago. Um, but I think I was around the time we started to record Discuss it. That's when we did ourselves up in Jeremy's house mm -hmm. and <laughs> we had uh, we had our Fostex recorder. No, I don't know if we had the Fostex or not. Anyway, we had got a recorder <laughs> and we didn't have any monitors so we just plugged into <laughs> TV speakers. You oh. know, just turned it on 
auxiliary or whatnot. It was an old TV. Well, this is all we got right now, so let's, you know, <laughs> if we can get it to sound good through this, then we're okay. But if it sounds good through this, it better sound good through <laughs> somebody's car stereo. And uh, once we got it recorded, uh, Skeptic Productions picked it up. And Chris Morrison, who used to play in Harakiri, mm -hmm. he, he, he was running that at the time and he went and printed up the and uh, he, he printed up the disc and got them all made and gave it all kinds of distribution and stuff and I, that was really cool um, it was just for some reason around that time we just couldn't get a lot of shows to back it you know to back mm -hmm. it up for some reason it was just like it wasn't one of those dry times around. It must have been, dude. Because I mean, we get through, you've been in Muncie for thirty years, you know. We go through phases where you can book every fucking weekend at a different place, and then you go through where you got a year, you're not, you're booking one show because yep. nowhere wants to book anybody. Exactly, and I think that's exactly what it was. And Chris was like, "Man, just get out and play shows. That way we can get these sold." Or did you guys venture up to like Indy or Fort Wayne or any of that? Yeah, what well, we did eventually. Um, we, we didn't play Fort Wayne a whole lot. Um, you see, that's kind of sad in my eyes, man, because a lot of the shows I've been to in Fort Wayne, especially when I was in like high school with death metal, Fort Wayne's always Fort been Wayne's a good metal. Do, yeah, they they love their metal up there. I mean, we have I mean we played there a few times. Legion has played more Fort Wayne yeah. than Neck has, but um, the times that Neck has played Fort Wayne, it's mm. been been awesome and I meant to say I miss playing with Nick I mean we haven't been active since January 15 um, I won't get out and do you know, yeah. my drums have been sitting in storage for six years thankfully you know I got two other drum sets that I can you know keep my chops going and stuff yeah. but you know, gotta keep talking to the slide over for some reason my computer's saying it's not plugged in oh you gotta go battery or you're going battery but uh there it goes. That's all I would need is just to die right in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, say my pearls have been sitting in my storage room for six years, dude, and, you know, I'm, they, they're ready to come out. I just, and for one, I don't have anywhere to set them up and just, you know, just to play for myself. Yeah. But, uh, I got my uh, my axis pedals turn into little kick drums. Mm -hmm. You know, I can turn them. You just turn them into pe you know like kick practice kick pedal mm -hmm. or whatever. And I got my practice pad, so I can sit and work my feet and then work my hand. You know, just to kind of keep it keep going. it going. That's one thing Dave talked about with you. He said he likes he prefers your blast to his blast. If you listen to that episode, he talks about he talks about you a lot and like the Necro guys. Because he told me, like, uh, you and, like, Starkey and him said Legion's a big reason Necro started. It is. But it. He, he told me, he was like, uh, Necro's a big reason, or that Legion stuck around because swapping members, members filling in for shows. He told me at one point, he was like, pretty much all of Necro was in Legion. Which is minus Jeremy. Yeah. Minus Jeremy. Yeah. Um, Daniel was in at the time, or he was in What Legion. didn't Daniel, wasn't, he was... Um, their vocalist for Yeah, a while. he played bass and sang. Um, I can't remember when Daniel stepped in, but he took Ben Rassler's place. I'd have and, to listen to that episode with Dave. <laughs> uh, and then it was what was cool with Legion was when I picked up the Legion demos and stuff before I joined. Mm -hmm. I had the lyric. I had all that shit. Yeah. Study. Well, that was one thing I wanted to get into you into that with you and we're around that time frame because we're about 2000 right now um, what got you into doing vocals in high school uh, I was discovering Napalm Death mm -hmm. the Harmony yeah. Corruption I mean, God I love that record okay. and Obituary Cause of Death and it was just and Wow, I can't believe I'd be singing that way. You know, <laughs> that's how I felt when I saw Barnes on Ace Ventura. I didn't know. I was like, what the fuck? So I just kept trying and kept trying. And, and, 
when I first joined Legion Dude, my voice wasn't like it is now. It, it took me a lot to develop it. Mm -hmm. I was developing as I was jamming yeah, yeah, yeah. those guys. And Random shout out there, dude. You sound consistent as fuck all the time. Well, I've I never, appreciate it. I've been seeing you play in Legion now for damn near two decades, and I've enjoyed it every time. It's fun. It's it's a blast. Um, so it took me. I was developing as I was jamming, with mm -hmm. it, and it just and just one day there it was. I was like, that's Got what it. I want. There it is. There it is. And. Just try to keep. I try to be as consistent as I possibly can. Uh, but like before I joined Legion, I had the first demo, and I had Blissful Misery, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure I had F1 at the time. And I had all, you know, I drilled that shit mm. in my head. And I'll never forget one day. Uh, I think it was when Ben left the first time was when Legion was practicing in the Wheeling House and they were trying out a dude named Joe I can't remember his name and I was like shit let me give it a try you know mm -hmm. I got up and sang Kirkland with him and they were just like dude <laughs> and that was my first time jamming yeah. with him and I was like damn that was fun and uh, that's pretty much how Dave told me your first time was he was like when he got up there he did that song and we all were just like where the fuck that come from? Like, <laughs> it's because I've studied that shit, yeah. dude. I listen to it all the time, and it's like as soon as I joined Legion, I already knew half the catalog. So I yeah, and I, it was an easier transition than oh yeah, having was, someone brand new. And my first show when we played at the Melody Inn, and I was just so prepared. I I made little cue cards to set off to the side of the stage because I didn't want to fuck it up. Mm -hmm. This was my first you know first jam. And Dave's like. Just go up there and just try to pull off the best you can. And I was like, all right, mm -hmm. you know, and it was cool because in the melody end, the stage is pretty small. Yeah, so I was standing out on the floor while the I was there. wondering, is Dave, has he always had that Dude, monster kit? I can remember yeah. way, you know, way back in the day. If anyone doesn't know the melody end, that stage with Dave's kit, I don't, for, like, I don't be able, I can't see anyone else really being able to be up there. Well, and... Mikey and Scotty would be on one side of the drumizer, mm. and I don't even remember. I think it was who was jamming with this at the time. It might have been Steve Wilsford. Gosh, I'm bald. But anyway, yeah, you're good. Stand you guys on the went floor. through a lot of changes, so remembering everybody's name, like, uh, and being on the floor, and then just, you know, all right, you know, I'm gonna and shit starting going crazy. Mm. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> yeah, this is fun. And it's, it's just been like that ever since. And I just have a blast, dude. And I love Dave. I fucking love all those dudes. Like Scotty, Mikey, and Jeremy and Daniel. All the dudes I've jammed with. They're my brothers for life and beyond. And, and I'm, I'm very fortunate to jam with those guys. Mm, and, especially for so long. And, That's one thing I talked about with Dave, too, when I did that episode growing up in this music scene and being very new to a genre that you guys have been doing for a long time uh you guys were always like genuine you were always nice especially to the little annoying kid asking you know to buy a sticker CDs. that's what makes it go around dude. and I, uh, I told him i was like you especially like you're one of the nicest fucking guys i've ever met and on a good day <laughs> and fucking Dave, like he's a gentle giant. Dude, Starkey, like when I first started playing music, he's one to help me learn how to set up my basing. Like, I love Starkey. Wendell's helped me so much with like being able to figure out how to get tapes and CDs, and then doing actually printing them for us, and watching fucking Mikey play, and just learning bass from watching someone play, and. Even with you, when I picked up doing vocals for a few years, I told Dave about that. I was like, I used to watch, like, and pay attention to how he would breathe and, like, watch his throat and, like, the way his body would move just so I could figure things out. Yeah, like self-development. I, I taught myself. Yeah, that, you know. and it just, you know, it's something that y'all are, like, the, the 
death metal, like the image is real fast paced, brutal music and you would think that you guys wouldn't be as nice as you are. Oh man, that's just... I don't know if everybody has that perspective as I do, but well, and that's that's just obviously like I said too, I grew up around you guys oh, and yeah. that's like a fanboy thing. Like I full on admit when you told me you were, you would do this, when Dave told me he'd do this, when Kendra told me he'd do this, and Pat Ray, I was like, man, this is like fanboy moment. Like, <laughs> fucking feel like a kid again. Oh, uh, there ain't no sense in being shitty to nobody unless they're shitty to you. I mean, otherwise, they're sharing. You know, mm -hmm. they love it as much as you do. So why not? You know, well, do you keep it moving. Uh, tying back into that 2004 era, that first Dead Leaf. Were you guys oh. a part of that? The uh, fairgrounds, yeah, the first one at the fairgrounds was Necro or Legion. I think both. Um, because I, re I, I wasn't at the fairgrounds one, I was at the center stage one the next year. I wasn't allowed uh, to go to the fairgrounds one. The fairground one, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, bomb, bomber wasn't there, uh. I want to say Bomber couldn't make it, or I don't remember, so I ended up drumming at Mobile. And yeah, I've talked to you, I've talked about that a lot. Uh, that was hard. I think that was one of the first times I'd done it, and I was like, you know. I still have a memory playing with uh, Necro out of the Lions Club, and you had that headset mic on, and you're just back there just singing and going at it. Oh, uh, in Selma? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, I... That was the easiest way to do it because I used to have, you know, the mic stand, and mm -hmm. I didn't, re you know, realize to put it upwards. That yeah. way I could reach. But the first time I played with that, the mic stand, I had it down here, so I'm just kind of doing one of these. Yeah. Like, oh God, what am I doing? <laughs> but then once I got that headset, I mean, it looked kind of ridiculous, but it worked, and I could keep my hands free and still pull off a lot of that, you know, singing and drumming at the same time. And fortunately. The stuff we were playing was, you know, I wrote the lyrics and patterns to the stuff, so... Oh, hold on a second. Oh, 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 so someone's knocking on my back door. I'm just gonna oh. let it keep recording. Right on. You're good. Right on. Uh, if you want more water, man, send me. Actually, yes. Ooh! I can cut that part out. Right on. Sean Tatman showed up, but he left before I got down there. I didn't hear him knocking on the door. Sean, I haven't seen him. Yeah, he wanted to come over and talk to you. Yo, my bad, come back. See, Ribble's right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to ask Clifton how to edit this part out. <laughs> Still learning. That'd be alright, dude. 
I forgot he messaged me like last week when and he was like, you mind if I come over and talk to Scott? And I was <laughs> like, dude, I don't care. Uh, but I actually, I went going back in when we talked about the headset thing, man. I talked to, um, last night when I was telling him, I was like, uh, my drummer about Necro and letting him listen. I told him one time about the shows and you had the headset thing and he was like, dude, I would have paid to see that. He was like, someone playing drums that fast and being able to do vocals <laughs> like that. Well, when we get back together, I'm sure I'll be doing it. So, Who's, I'll talk to you about that. Come back All right. Of undertaking, I didn't have to pay for it. That's what. That's how I got vinyls. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, uh, going back to that, we're at the talk about the deadly. Right. Nice. I remember those days. Um. Did you all play the? The was it the? We we're talking about the first year. Uh, Bal you said Balmer wasn't there. Yeah. But we got into the. You drumming and playing and doing vocals. Um, I don't remember why Jason wasn't there. Um, but we ended up playing. We played our normal set, and I went ahead and sang and, and did that. It was it was trying, but um, I said thankfully a lot of the stuff that we had played I had written the vocals for yeah. and the vocal pattern so I could kind of lock in mm -hmm. and later on knowing that I would have to sing and draw mm -hmm. I, I consciously thought the, did that, the that way out, dude. Um, and then we play the stuff off of dying rights like Born of Field Jason wrote all mm -hmm. the patterns but he had he had step down from the vocal mic and that's when I took over mm -hmm. full time and I had to learn how to do his stuff too. Now granted I don't sing all the words I just kind of sound like I do but that's the only <laughs> way I can get yeah. through it and still concentrate on what the song is doing but it's you know just kind of have to obituary mm -hmm. it for you know <laughs> certain parts <laughs> of it but uh, I'll pull it off it's pretty cool. Uh, like um, I wrote the book to the lyrics to um, all extracted mm -hmm. and wrote the lyrics and patterns and the lyrics and patterns for strategy so that was pretty easy um, I really couldn't do any of the other ones so Jeremy and Mikey would trade mm. off on and I, rem I, I remember do. those days but uh, then enter Daniel he came in was this, did he come in before or after his time in Legion? This was after, after. he was in Legion. Uh, Daniel came in, I Oh yeah, say you said in 2004 you were in Legion. Yeah, I joined yeah. in 2004. Right. Trying timeline, was, right? I think he, he quit some Speakeasy shows then. back then, right? Was that the... Uh, that where Be Here Now is Oh, now? yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> What, when Daniel was in? I think so, and I, I was under, me and Drew were underage, and you guys had helped sneak us in. I think, I think you were on vocals then, though. Like, yeah, we, uh, we played there in my, in, uh, my earlier years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, Daniel, he joined Nick in 2008. And he did bass and vocal. He just wanted to either bass or vocal. Mm -hmm. but, dude, you're awesome at both. Yeah. I mean, you know, oh, all right, all right. And 
not long after Daniel joined is when we started writing for the upcoming Chronicles of the Apocalypse mm. thing. That, you know, <laughs> we'll get to Andy, that. I love you. Uh, still on hold after some time, but um, <laughs> yeah, that'll we'll, that will be Daniel's first record with the crop, isn't it? I can't wait. Even though he's been in the band 13 years yes, now, it will be his first. And this is when it comes out. This will be some of our best shit, dude. And that's when we first started doing five string basses and seven mm. string guitars. And that's, you know, that was new for a band. It was just like, oh my god. We just switched to that this summer. And I can't wait, man. Uh, my buddy Ronnie, Ronnie Loser, has got the, the uh, he's got the album cover drawn out. He's like, well, I don't want you to see it until this whole thing's done. <laughs> so it's been freaking six years now? Yeah, so... We got that. We got the cover. He's got it drawn. He's like, dude, you'll love it. Like, All right, man. I'll take you word for it because he's a good artist. And and uh, so that when it's ready, dude, you, everybody will dig it. I dig it. I'd say I haven't heard it in forever. Mm -hmm. I actually wrote a whole song on there. I've never done that before. I mean, I've got riffs and yeah. songs, but I, there is an instrumental on mm -hmm. it that I wrote. Nice. And. Um, I wrote my first song this year, actually, uh, and it's it's really hard. It's like, damn, you know, I can I can do this, you know. But I got I've got riffs and a bunch of songs, mm -hmm. like, you know. But the actual whole song by myself will be on this new one. Yeah. So, um, and even while we're in our downtime, uh, me and Jeremy, we got four new songs written at his studio. You know, it's just you know we can. Me and him jamming out, and he can play a bass track on it. We ain't got any vocals for it yet, but there will be some new neck after this new neck. Mm -hmm. So, let's say we got four tunes, and it's, it's definitely neck. What's um, Daniel doing right now? I actually haven't seen Daniel or mm -hmm. talked to him in a little over a year. He's but, just doing his thing. Ever since this COVID thing. I think the last time I saw him play anything, he was with Hell Came Home. Yeah, he was in Hell Came Home for a stint. Yeah. I never did get to see them with him in there. But it was kind of funny, you know, me and Lindell being in Legion, mm -hmm. and then the other half of Necrophagus being in Hell Came yeah. Home. But, you know, um, I dig it. Yeah, I'm not, I love Daniel's bass. I love Daniel. He's and right, his, he's a phenomenal fucking bass player, dude. And his vocals, like on his his vocals on up one, mm -hmm. just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then when I was learning the change, the song, the change, and I'm and I find after I got it down, I'm like Daniel, you know how fucking hard that song was to learn. <laughs> he was just like, yes. <laughs> I said, I finally got it, but damn it, Daniel, you know, just kind of one of those things, and. Um, it, I just can't wait for everybody to hear this new neck. And it's, it, Daniel is just fucking sick on this. Mm -hmm. That's <sighs> What's cool that you guys got that release whenever the fuck it comes out. I'm not trying to sound negative, but I've not heard any real positive about an impending release date, with the exception of the music is... All it needs is edited, mixed, and mastered. That's all it needs. Mm. And six years it should have been. So, I said, Andy, I love you, dude. We're ready. <laughs> We're all ready. I'm definitely been ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some of our best shit on it. And it, we, after we play, well, we took about a year and a half off and locked ourselves in Jeremy's attic. I had my electric drum set, mm -hmm. set up at the time, and we was all just running through the PA, so it wasn't blasting our head. We, we hammered out that. I said, man, that's some of our best shit yeah. ever. It's, I always enjoyed Daniel. I enjoyed Balmer, too. I, I mean, even when you did it, you gave me some of my best, like I said, memory-wise, watching you play with the headset mic. Uh, that was, it was a challenge, but I got, I got used to it. Well, it's always been impressive for me, you, doing you know, drums and vocals at the same time, because that's inspirational for me, because I do that when we play live. You know, black metal, we don't do a lot of live stuff, but when we do, you know. And it's a lot of keeping relaxed, and then keeping the breathing. Mm -hmm. all right, all right. And there was times when we played at, oh, it was in the Indy, and I 
can't remember the name of the place to save my ass. But there was no ventilation, straight lights, mm. and it was just getting hot and hard to breathe. And then people were telling me, man, we could hear you panting up there, man. We could hear you breathe. It was fucking hot, dude. <laughs> it, was, it was hard. It was hard that day. As long as like I got a fan on me just to kind of keep some air circulating, mm. it's not bad. Yeah, I can pull it off. The only place I can ever say that I felt like I was going to pass out playing when I was playing bass and doing vocals was upstairs at the Harad. We played with a show, we played a show with Mayax and I want to say Discard the Body and we, we played first and it was just, I'm fucking barely breathing, dying up there like, and we only played like a 20 minute set and I, that was another it's take out It's nasty up there in the summer. I stripped out of basketball shorts on me. You, you, can, you can see, I have pictures from that. The first song, I have a shirt on. About the third song, I'm in a tank top. The fourth song, I have no shirt on. And then the fifth song, I'm like almost Cut. stripped all the way down. There's no <laughs> circulation in that place. Mm -hmm. It was fun. I remember, you know, being up there a few times, but it's just on everything. Yeah, those, those back steps. <laughs> uh, you talk about flying tomato and different mm -hmm. places like that. What have you been your favorite local venues to play at over the years? Uh, definitely like used to live music. When, when it was called tomato. the COC. When it was called the COC back in the day, the Dead Pigeon. Mm -hmm. Or right, hauling out. Uh, when, we, I, when we played flying tomato three weeks after four rings <laughs> and then we thought man we're gonna play at the cfc one day you know? <laughs> i mean and then we did and i remember something breaking on my drum set and i had i was buying jeremy's old drum set off of him at the time and a stand broke so i had to rig a paint can and or on the seventh stand somehow in order to get it to stand but um we thought, oh shit, we're playing the CFC. This is fucking awesome. We're getting, we're gonna get up there on the undo, and it was just shit started breaking. I'm like, oh god, no. <laughs> worst time for that. But it might have been a couple weeks, so we hadn't even been a band probably a month and a half, two months, and mm -hmm. we were already there. People were asking us to play, and it was like, yeah, sure, you know, we didn't everyone, want our shit together, but... Everyone I've heard talk about the CSC always has praise. Like, oh, I love that party. Did you guys get Seth Putnam to come play there and they, they got beat up so bad they left all their equipment? I don't... <laughs> that might have been before I was in Legion. I'm pretty sure Legion was on that show. Uh. <laughs> but that was, I, do, I didn't get to go to that one. I don't remember what happened, but yeah, I heard the story. I heard some stories, too. <laughs> I heard the story, but uh, I'll always love that place. That's that's just significant to me mm. because that's well, it's kind of the nicest stage and backstage setup we've got in town too. Like oh, since it's been remodeled, mm -hmm. yeah. When yeah. we first started going there, it was just like plywood on like wooden legs. <laughs> I mean, it was rough looking, but it was like, oh shit, now we. And that's where I first saw Legion for the first mm. time, and I saw Anthropophagy, and I saw Subconscious, and I'm like, this is it. This is, I didn't know this shit existed <laughs> here. And that was the place I saw him. That's where, that was the place I met Jeremy and Mikey, and that just has significant mm. memory to me. And just, I will always love that place, even when it was in its rundown state. And compared to the way it is now, it's like super nice. Yeah, yeah. Chris has done wonders with the sound, the lights there. Like fucking COVID, man. It's just it's oh, crazy. Got everybody so, dialed I mean, in. <laughs> we, we fucking haven't played there. We call like at my as my own band. We say like the hall is like our home venue in Muncie. It is straight up. And we've done like. We do our Toys for Tot show there. You guys played that one year with us. Mm -hmm. Two years, I must say one or two years with us. Um, um, right, okay, I think I remember. Um, you had the guitar player from Fort Wayne. You guys Mike played the Bachowski. first year we did it. That was back in, he, I think the last time we played at Valhalla was in 2016? I don't know. I don't think it's been that long. I'm not sure. I don't think it's been that long either. First, I just recall Dave making a video, and it just they said October of 2016, and that's the 
Maybe that's what I'm recalling. Mm. I don't remember the. To- you guys played the Toys for Tots show. I don't remember the. F- Last year would have been our fourth one, so it would have been 19, 18, 17. So it would have, you either okay. played 17 or 18. Maybe that's okay. I think I voted. It was in December. Yeah. It was, and it was 2017 or 18. Because the last one I had, uh, I had Dave on it, but he was playing in Demons. And then I had Hell Came Home, my band, and a band called Quartet Six. But you, the, it was either the first or second year because I had Carrie and Vale from Richmond play. Smiley, Chris Smiley's a drummer. Uh, yeah. And uh, he specifically asked, he was like, can you get Legion on the show with us? And I was like, okay. if they, the guys will agree, yeah. Like a very metal Christmas show. Uh, yeah. I, I want to say you guys would have been, it would have been December of 2017 when you played. Okay, yeah, I remember. But I'm pretty sure that cold. might have been your last show out the hall. Okay, uh, now I'm starting to remember and, and it I do remember sucked. it being cold. I was okay. dreading that day because I, it hadn't snowed all day, but it was cold as fuck. Yes, I do remember. And then <coughs> at like six, seven, eight o'clock, dude, it just fucking, like a foot of snow dropped out of nowhere. <laughs> and I remember freaking out, like, no one's going to come. It's my first Toys for Tots show. Like, great. I'm not, you know, not going to raise any money. And then about 9.30 and it, yeah it, it freaked me out dude we filled two boxes full of toys those big and then braced 500 bucks so they might have they had all the roads and shit cleared out yeah that that's what I'm thinking right, they cool. only missed the first band which it was my band so I mean <laughs> <laughs> that's how it always works <laughs> well when I throw my own shows even though my guys don't like that I do that most of the time I don't want it to be like an ego stroke I'll throw my own band on first your setup yeah do what you want <laughs> but yeah you guys played that you know, i can't remember the last time i saw necro live say the last show we played was do you have any idea on indianapolis that? death feast that uh Ooh, kyle messick kyle messick set it up and that was in january of 15. that was indy last time i saw him i know it at the fifth quarter one of my favorite random times seeing him was I had been in California for like three or four months and I hopped off of a Greyhound bus and was like, oh, there's a bar across the street and walked in and these guys were playing. <laughs> and I was like, yes. And Andy? Yeah, it was, uh, um, it's, I don't know if the bar is there anymore. It's right across from the Greyhound bus station. And uh, when I first walked in, I just saw Dave's big ass back at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> And that was the fifth quarter? No, well, not the one I fifth quarter. I don't know if there's... I don't I, like, it was random, and I think you guys were like bitching that you never play there again. But it was like... There, it was there directly was, across from the Graham bus station. I don't think it was fifth quarter, because I don't remember a bus station being near fifth quarter. And I spent a lot of time in that parking lot. I can't... And it was this was like 2000 fucking four. So... Oh, that, that was early 2004, then it was... I, I wasn't in, in Legion at that point. Okay. I, in September of '04, it was. But if it was before that, it was. So it might, yeah, you might not have. Time. It might not have. You might not have been there then, because I can't remember precisely. You know, I mean, 2004, and I've been in California for months. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. So, Indianapolis Death Feast. That was Death, and we had played, we had mixed a couple old songs with a lot of our new ones that were going to be on Chronicles, and at that point in time, we was just like, you know, let's just kind of take a break for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Work schedules might have been, might have been happening with everybody, and we just, we just wanted to take a step back for a while. Mm. Kind of, you know, clear our heads and just kind of do other things. And uh, I said, that's that's been just since January 15. And I miss it. I, I miss it. And it's going to take a minute when we do go back to yeah. to readjust everything. I mean, you're gonna, there's going to be a lot of rust just to knock off and getting that feeling back together. And you got... I now I know I I don't know if I'm I can cry but I don't know if you even know is there even necro plans after 
the pandemic starts because we're in that we're kind of in the shows are getting booked more and, um not saying you guys are going to book a show but like as uh yeah i think so as at least because we're going to need some time to get everything yeah. back to the i mean i was figuring else. another year you know or more it's going to take us time to re-jail um as far you know whenever daniel's ready whenever scotty's ready and mm -hmm. you know in the meantime i said me and jeremy's been getting together and writing songs yeah. and daniel he's just yeah, he wanted he just wants to lay low mm -hmm. especially while this bullshit's going yeah. on and i get it you know he, he don't want to take the risk um scotty works a lot and yeah, i'm sure daniel works a lot i say i haven't talked to him in a little over a year i love you daniel um this I see the last I knew he just wanted to lay low when mm. this bullshit was going on and I'm, you know so a lot of people did I felt out of, I felt out of contact with you and Drew with you guys like a lot of people I haven't you know we've all kind of fallen out of contact with Drew that's sort of his choice but. and as soon as this you know March of last year when all this started Dave sent a text to everybody look let's just call it until this is done we wasn't expecting you know mm -hmm. he was expecting what two or three weeks or mm -hmm. yeah. not mm -hmm. 15 fucking months right oh and yeah we and as a band we lost a lot just last year within the last year because we had all of March booked oh. and then and then all that shit happened and I had booked a little like small like four city run and like we were going to go to like shoot all the way down to Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, and then come back up the Circle fourth day. Around. Yeah, being the fourth day ending in Muncie, canceled. But and, yeah, dude. had us on a couple festivals, which one of them frustrates the hell out of me because at the time we were playing like shoegaze, and there's a big shoegaze festival in Michigan. And I, it took me five fucking years to get us on it, and I finally gotten us on it. And the only good thing I can say about COVID is that it's refocused a lot of people. Yeah, that's and that's been a thing I've talked about on a lot of these too. Uh, Dave, Pat, Jason, all of them said like they want to see what happens with bands coming out of this mm -hmm. oh, because yeah. you've had so 15 months now sitting on material and like you're talking about the physical and mental that you needed for difference between vocals yes. and drums. People have so much shit, just stress and anxiety and depression explode. just to get out. It's gonna explode. Like, I can't wait to that. see these releases coming out of the pandemic. So the new the new Legion record's about done. I'm excited about that. I've been trying to talk to Dave still about printing the demos. I want to reprint the demos. But and everybody's gung ho but I'm still just waiting on there's files and stuff. Shit's gonna explode, dude. When everything is free and clear, mm -hmm. shit's just gonna. Pfft. All right, here we are. Here comes the, you know. And it's got me tempted to break out that whole Mayhem and Muncie banner again and just throw in Legion and fucking my band, Mayax, trying to get them all and just throw in all 20 bands around here that I've wanted to hear these 15 months and I haven't been able to see live and just throw us all in a fucking building and just be like, go at it. I'd fly back from Colorado for that. The only, only issue is I don't know how a couple grand to throw at it yet. Yeah, right. It's tempting though, because like you were saying, dude, when it, when we all can finally come back, dude, it's, it's going to be something. It's going to be, it's going to explode, dude. Everybody's got this pent up energy and it's just going to be, there it is. I just, it's weird being in Muncie, growing up here, going to shows since like I told you like 99, 2000 and not seeing at least, you know, any, I mean, be here now still doing shows. But, oh, are they? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean like a Legion show or just like any any real metal show honestly like it's it's weird because there used to be a time where you could fucking you could go downtown and see a metal show it almost like, defined like, living in Muncie yeah but like it was metal as fuck here back in the early mid days oh, mm -hmm. Muncie was just ripping mm -hmm. you had Legion, Nag, uh, Atreus, Harakiri would uh, come through uh, Shit. There was other just smaller bands that didn't last as long, like that Cystic Relapse. They were just like a gore grind band. From Florida? No, they were from here. 
Mm -hmm. One of the dudes lived in Yorktown. I can't remember. You know, I mean, it's been so long. I just had their demo. Uh, but that, like I said, they didn't last very long. Uh, Drew was actually going to do vocals for them, but then the band split up. I'd have to try to find that demo and bootleg it and send you a copy. Yeah, I don't I had that Solifidian tape. No, I the old Daniel Isley shit. Daniel and Deli West and Josh Caldwell. Yeah, I got that floating around somewhere too. But I remember when we played when Nick played with Solifidian, there was a lot of people there for their first show. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I miss about those days, especially like Dead Leaf days, man. Those were good shows. Like when Fog would come play, and I that was a good one. I saw a lot of bands that I was able to link up with when I got into like Leviathan Rising a few years after that, and we were able to play with bands we had met through Dead Leaf. And you talking about like COC, like growing up, Dead Leaf was the thing for me. Yeah. I always oh, wanted to play with Dead Leaf. We never miss that. And I only got to play it one year, and we were the first band, and we were all fucking just excited because we had not gotten to play it. We had just gotten like an EP put out, and I remember dropping it off to Nate Reese, and he was like, "You guys want to play this year? You know, yeah. opening spot. You'll be playing at like four, but I was like, I don't fucking care. Yeah, we'll do it. And we did, man. And that was just that was the thing. Like I felt like accomplished as a metal muncie yeah. metal musician got to be on the same stage as fucking legion necro i don't even remember who all played that year it was cool they would bring in uh bigger name acts mm -hmm. too like gore guts and you know what i mean that was always that was always cool to get to see all your favorite local bands and yeah. like two or three bands you never thought you'd and, get to see uh, we got to see a lot of bands we played in fort wayne with like cutthroat dreams and imminent demise and like just making those connections just from playing those shows with you guys like uh, I, I miss those days when well, the Muncie was ripping indeed right it really was but well, we had the party scene on campus yeah to combine with it too yes yes so you'd have big groups of you know people that's never even been exposed to metal showing up and loving it I miss when the water bowl was the water bowl and had all that area because mm -hmm. I I still have I still remember playing in another Leviathan memory we played down the hill going back where the cornfield is at now mm -hmm. where there used to be the trees with the one little gravel road in there and they set up a semi trailer as the stage oh shit and it was like a three day festival I don't remember the name of it I got the flyer somewhere but we got to play with so fucking many awesome metal bands I'd never even heard of, but just a full day of just metal all fucking day. And then if you walked up to the main stage, they had, in the, the shelter area, they had like little acoustic acts, and then they had a rap stage, and then they had like a radio rock stage. And then all the way in the back, you know, that's where us metalheads get stuck. But <laughs> That's all right with us. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'd rather have been anyway. Well, we did, we did a lot of body suspension that weekend, too. Dude, you got balls of steel for that shit. <laughs> I, I tried it once a year. Yeah. <laughs> he, he yeah. And Jesse. I did a full set uh, in, like, 2000, I want to say 13, singing while up in there. I did a 45-minute set <laughs> for the back. Brutal. At one point, I even picked a girl up while I was doing it, and that was hard. The picking her up was it the hard part the hard part was holding on to her and trying to do something muncie was cutting edge for that because now if you if you look at videos from like 2010 it's, it's, it's all right i got yeah. a few <laughs> they'll they'll show like now at sturgis and at these biker rallies after like way after we were doing mm -hmm. it all the time it shows here there that's like a, a main thing that they do at these biker festivals mm -hmm. like we we're kind of cutting edge for that going that stuff started in. that shit like 12 years ago right I remember seeing that at at Doc's. Yeah. I think it was before it was Valhalla. Well, you it was had still his, you guys had all that bullshit set up there and mm -hmm. the side of it, and I'm just like, oh my god. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just, how, how like, did they really did bring in gallows? <laughs> yeah. And then I remember seeing it all sectioned yeah. off, and I'm just like, I'm gonna let you two keep talking. I'm gonna use the restroom. Sean, take it for me for a minute. <coughs> and and that's something I couldn't do because. I don't have any tattoos. I don't uh, have any piercings. You, I was. You remember? Um, Be here now. It was called Vinny Vitty Variety. 
they had grinder girls legion i remember you remember that. standing next i was i just uh standing with you and we were both like he was like what the fuck <laughs> i talked to graham about that because i had graham watson who ran that and he was talking about uh he was like i re distinctly remember you and the singer of legion's reaction because you guys were standing together and you both were like the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those were, uh, it was, it was wild. I think, I think it could get wilder again, but like so much stuff has changed, you know, like. Yeah, a lot of, you know, I don't think it'll be like. Like it was. Yeah. You know, it's hard to even find any of these younger kids that are even into any extreme bands at all these days. Yeah. I'll try to get them into it, but that's got to be on there. Yeah, Volition. for sure. That's why we've been, uh, you know, instead of trying to go for a more commercial sound, you know, with what we were doing, uh, we've, t I mean, which black metal isn't very commercial no, no. anyway, but um, we've kind of taken what we've learned from that and just kind of intentionally kept it, you know, not very accessible. You know, we do, we do, yeah, we do about 25 copies of each release, and or even 10, you know. Keep and then, profile, that's, yeah. that's the whole beauty of it. Yeah, and I, and I like that, because then when somebody, you know, in China orders your thing, you can be like, you're only one of 10 people in the whole world that have this, you know. That's and, when you know you're like, damn. Yeah. That's yeah. And we've been, for us, uh, for me anyway, with nobody playing shows, it's it's given me an opportunity to work with other people to get some some studio stuff done. Like I've been working with uh, some guys from his band, um, putting together sort of a new project that's a lot more to the death metal. Like I actually put guttural vocals and there's bass on this release, and you know, so that's been for me. COVID's helped me with that a lot, uh, and that me. It's forced me to have to stick around Muncie longer and hang out with you guys. <laughs> Dad, go on. <laughs> Did you tell him about your goat play? Yeah, we were talking about it a little bit. It's, uh, I'm still just waiting for the link and my copies to come in the mail, but the guy in Florida has already put it out on the set. Yeah, so. that's the thing, too. The pandemic getting people to be more creative. Like, mm -hmm. he's pulling out, dude. Uh, Clifton won't be here for like another hour. I was gonna say you should check it out, dude. It's, the pandemic's creating a lot of creative energy with people. Like, All right. For would, me, especially because it, it halted so many of my other projects. You know, uh, uh, not being able to go to the gym, having to build one at home. You know, mm -hmm. uh, just the, homeschooling too. Yeah. That too. I've got two kids that I'm having to teach, and with the opportunity of homeschool, I get to teach them. You know, uh, a little bit more about the world from my perspective you know and right. that helps a lot i think what's been going on with you guys during the pandemic i mean i know legion's not doing anything say legion that's so obviously uh said uh i haven't talked to jeremy or i haven't seen jeremy since january because he's redoing all the floors in his house so he kind of mm -hmm. he told me the about studio that. up and you know, I'm just kind of waiting to hear from him. We've been getting together on Saturday afternoons for a couple hours. You know, we mm -hmm. don't want to put like a whole day in it and just get burnt. So we just roll with what creative energy had to put it away. Yeah. And just break that up. And, you know, every couple, you know, a couple hours every mm -hmm. Saturday. So we're not, you know, and say we've got four songs, um, four skeletons. Um, and said Legion hasn't done anything since the pandemic. And, Man, I've just either been at work or at home, mm -hmm. and I go to my brother's every so often, you know, and I haven't seen anybody. Well, that's either. probably why you agreed to come on to this with me. It's, that's it's, I've had a few people tell me the same thing. They haven't been going anywhere, so getting to come over here and talk to someone about music for, you know, an hour or two has been a good thing for them. Exactly. And, you know, Sean King, dude, fucking, I ain't forgot about you. I will come over to your house. <laughs> I know, I'm supposed to, too. I'm supposed to go there for a barbecue. I was thinking about trying to go Sunday. And he was like, dude, just holler at me. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'll make it. And despite when I get home from work, I'm just so new. Dude, mm -hmm. I'm just, I just you know, chill at home away from yeah. humans. <laughs> well, his, his old lady, I'm, I got to meet her in uh, Washington, or in Oregon when I went out there. And I got to see She's him when cool. he was out there. She's cool. So I, 
I ended up being on this weird schedule where I see her walking to work often, so I just give her a lift. That's and she's awesome. like, you guys need to come over for dinner. Because, uh, yeah, Sean, he drew you guys' his logo yeah, that you still use. Yeah, he drew the for this logo. Mm -hmm. He sure did. I didn't know about that. Yeah, yep. he sure did. Yep. I'm glad you brought that up because yep. I forgot all about you. Mm -hmm. Sean King. He drew the, you know, he drew the Legion one. Oh, that's all day. That's yeah, that's day. That's all day. Which, and still those two bands, you know, growing up, getting to see you guys, uh, both those bands and the other local bands we mentioned all the time, is like, you kind of assume that, you know, Muncie's got nothing going on, so for for that, you know, you just think that's going to be a bigger level when you go to another city, it's like, no, dude, they didn't have that, they, you know, mm -hmm. and then listening to a whole bunch of other uh, bands, um, you guys have a groove that nobody, both those bands have a, a very special, unique fucking sound that's not out there anywhere Thanks, else man. like I, there's there's an uh, uh some hints of what you guys do in the new york scene a little bit like with bands like immolation um uh, similar uh but i think you guys have a more of a nastier groove than they do we are very very influenced by older suffocation mm -hmm. we yeah <laughs> that, yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That. that's very clear that. yeah and we're very very by monstrosity. Mm -hmm. um, Everyone I've talked to with Legion and with Necro, I've heard monstrosity brought up a lot. Yeah, so yeah. Very yeah. and they brought them up here for Deadly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never missed one of those, except the first one, because I wasn't allowed to go to the fairground. <laughs> <laughs> we wear our inspirations on our sleeve, you know. We, that's what we love, mm -hmm. and, and, and it comes out through both bands. Like for me growing up, my two favorite records ever, it's Harmony Corruption, Napalm Death, and that was Mick Harris with the Blast Beats. Mm -hmm. That was when I first, like, oh my God, he, um, at first I couldn't lock into what Nick was doing. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I, it locked, I was like, shit, there it is, that's awesome. So I tried to combine, you know, the styles of the Blast Beat from Mick and South of Heaven. Oh my god, I love that record so much. So I tried to combine like the drum fills of Dave Lombardi mm -hmm. and the blast beats of Mick Harris, and that was where my style came yeah. from. And obviously, like Effigy of the Forgotten, with the. It was just like, there it is. And that was. And there's a couple of parts um, of those. Uh, of those Necro records that are like my favorite moments in extreme metal hands down period like there's just a like I can't even remember the exact name of the song but there's just a couple of off time things that you do that, oh. that are so sick we try to fuck it up some just there's one it. part that always gets me I can't remember what part it is but I, uh, it's on Disgusted and I just like it when uh, I think Balmer it's like I can't remember exactly what he says but it's like something something harsh metal yeah. oh okay yeah. that was that was t that was recorded out of dead leaf uh we took that from a videotape and that was actually andy newman saying bring forth harsh metal yes, I, and <laughs> and we took that from the videotape and put that at the beginning of the i just love it the bring forth harsh metal. And there was that <laughs> one dead leaf show that you threw that was at the fairgrounds? Yeah, the main And that right before they were about to play, I fucking screamed that. <laughs> I, yes, I remember that. I remember that, too. I remember everyone being... Uh, I got hit up by a, a lot of like promoters around here that were like, how'd you, how'd you pull off getting Necrophagus and Legion on the same show? And I'm like, bro, I don't even know how the fuck I pulled off one of them. <laughs> well, we're pretty easy, actually. Uh, and he is like, I've been trying, one guy's like, I've been trying to get Necro for years. And then you come along and they're like on your show. And I was like, you're just not metal enough. Well, I explained <laughs> it to him though too, with what we were talking about earlier. I grew up around you guys. Yeah, I mean, we're not hard to get a hold like, of. Uh, I've talked to Dave about it before. He's like, I remember you being a little kid with headphones on at shows and shit. He was like, Patty remembers meeting my mom before dropping me off at a dead leaf. Because she wanted to see what it was like there. And Patty was like, I remember talking to your mom for like 15, 20 minutes. Like, you know, and going back to y'all being nice dudes. Like, and I, I told that guy, I was like, I've fucking known Starkey forever. I was like, I've been seeing Ruble play since, you know, 2000. I was right. like, 
Like it's just they know me, they trust me. They know me from going in Karma Records, half you know, Sean and uh, yes, Jeremy Sean and, and, mm -hmm. and Scotty was working there yep. at the time. So because I'd always be like, you know, just, buying cool stuff, so they would Mun recommend. Muncie stuff. people are gonna help more Muncie people out. And I wasn't trying to be a dick when I told that guy that, but I was like, I'm from here. They know me. I grew up yeah, here. Exactly. They watch me grow up. Like I've been seeing a place since I was fucking like ten, and I'm you know I'm 32 now. Like. Crazy shit. And that's you shouldn't what, say stuff like that. And that's what, that's what they'll be like. Oh, I get it. Like you're more like the family kind of yeah. thing. And I was like, yeah. I mean, <coughs> that's and that's an uh, element I do miss about back when Muncie was always going because bands would just throw each other shows all the fucking time, no They're competition. And they'd be like, hey, we need one more slot. Here, you guys want this? And then fucking bands we had that with bands in fort wayne that's how we played the berlin the first time fucking uh is that where we played where where when we, we did three shows with that band we played we played yeah Marion county we played something. um oh god yeah, there's a fucking little dive bar in Marion. um it only had like a beer and wine license super small stage and it was like a hallway like this yeah, and the stage was at the back but it was, it was fucking tiny as shit i can't remember the name of it and we did play at the berlin and mm -hmm. then we played at center stage yeah we had like a wow. three run band like and we played wet fest oh yeah too. so we played four, four shows all four of those shows that are going back to that they were just offered to us we didn't book them mm -hmm. we were put yeah, on them that was a lot of, a lot a mm -hmm. lot of that happened and it's just a matter of, hey, if you hit us up, you know, whoever you talk to, let's check with the other band mm -hmm. members and see, hey, do you, are you guys free? Are you guys doing mm -hmm. No, I've got shit going on. Okay, sorry guys, we can't do this. Yeah. Hit us up that later day and let's see what happens. That's all, you know, mm -hmm. there ain't no sense of being shitty about it or anything. So. I think more than anything, um, people say they're trying to do something but they, they actually didn't really have the balls to ask anybody yet mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was the thing when i did because i did the three years of doing 20 bands in one day which is fuck, i don't know what the hell i ever agreed to doing that and then the fourth year i did 10 bands and then the last year i only did four <laughs> i was like <laughs> <laughs> we learned about, the thing about doing like big thing the big fest 10 plus you gotta have a stage manager and it's, it's the thing of like these younger bands, they think as soon as they're done, they can just go off the stage. Yeah. Well, no, get and your shit off the stage. That's what I had, mm -hmm. man. Don't break your fucking drums down on stage. If you're Dave and have to take your cymbals off to move your rack, that's one thing. But if exactly. you don't have to do that, and he gets the cymbals off quick. For the size of his kit, he moves that shit pretty fast. And that's that. As soon as I'm done, I say good night. I pack my, put my mic in yeah. my bag and start helping yeah. him break his shit down. And we're off the stage and less than 10 minutes and that was that was the thing when i did the the mayhem shows i put the stages side by side so you can keep one and yeah you kind of keep and, the rotation going. That's and, awesome. I, and i told the bands in the messages before i even the show i was like if you guys go over your 30 minutes the sound guy's cutting your sound and the next band starting like That's period it. and they were like all right i only had one issue the band started five minutes late and it was because of their bass player. For some reason, he could not get any sound out of his hand. Fucking Starkey runs over there and does some weird shit. Bam, there it is. They had to cut one song, though. Well, still. We ran those three years. I had ten hours. And literally, the longest time frame, because my mom would always time it, because she ran the door for us, too. Like, I remember. Uh, ten hours and seven minutes. In three bad. in three years with twenty bands, the longest I ever went over was seven minutes. That's awesome as fuck. Dude. But I had people like you're saying, my brother, my uncle, I had my own band, I had another band that was like, I'll let you guys play, but you gotta be stagehands when you're not playing. They're like, all right, we just want to play. They were like a new like seventeen, eighteen year old kids, and I was like, this is how you, this is how you get known because. The older guys are gonna remember. Hey, that kid helped me get my shit off stage. Makes a real good impression. Yeah, yeah, and he's playing in a band, mm -hmm. and it worked. I got him on and off pretty. You know, I never. That's uh, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. As soon as you're done, get your shit off the stage. That way, because 
what if somebody's got to work the next mm -hmm. day? You know, hey, I'm here waiting. Well, and that's why I always felt bad when we booked Legion, because I, I always know you got to work early the next day. And I was like, man, I don't want to put fucking Ruble last. I, I mean, I've like, done it before. I know. I'm sure do it again. You know, and then it, it's once I get home from work that day, then it's like, not done. done. <laughs> but, uh, shit, I've been doing it for years, dude. Best biscuits and gravy on the planet. Oh, God. <laughs> you don't want any of that anymore. <laughs> but, yeah. Just just keep to your set time. Get, get your shit. Get your shit on the stage. Break it down there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's happy. So, talking about things going forward, man. What do you think is going to happen after the pandemic? This one of the, one, mm. the winding down questions I like to ask. After? Happen. It's never going to end. Far as. The whole, the <laughs> winding down process of the pandemic, I guess. It's never, you're right, it's honestly never really going to go away. Definitely shows are going to be, I think they'll be, they'll be show everywhere. I'm anxious to play again, man. Then it's just going to be, well, who don't want to go see? Mm -hmm. Who don't want to go see? Because mm -hmm. there's, a spe you know, um, Probably a lot of shows going on at the same time. You yeah, decide yeah. who you want to go because they're hopefully everybody just gets it. If you know, if everybody can kind of come and say, "Hey, we're playing this show. Would you want to mm -hmm. kind of come? You know, work together. Yes, that's what so so operate. Well, work together. There's not five different shows the same Saturday that exactly. Yeah. Especially if there's two you want to see in two different places playing. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. well, you know, Indeed, I've done that before though. The last show I got to see before this all started, thank God for the first time I got to see Embalmer. Mm. That was I think we awesome. Played with them one time. Mm -hmm. I just, it was a, in Fort Wayne. That was a good time. They were cool dudes too. I got to hang out with with them a little bit, and I bought all the regurgitation gear and Embalmer gear too. <laughs> Starkey's actually the one that got me my first hookup with a place in Fort Wayne. We played Berlin at the Berlin. That was a that was a Starkey slide, Jimmy. Is that one neck buddy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was in Leviathan Rising at the time. I vaguely remember that show. But that was a, you know, like I said, that was a, a Starkey. You know, and there a motorcycle club, like, right? right there used, the used to be. It's not there, it's there anymore. anymore. The, the Berlin's now actually called The Ruin. And we're playing, we're, my band's playing there uh, June 11th. They, re, they repainted it, did all kinds of shit. Man, I haven't been in there yet. But from the outside, it looks nice. I haven't been in there for a while too. I think it was. I've been to punk shows where you're waiting in fear and piss at that at that venue <laughs> for sure. Berlin was gnarly. <laughs> definition of a like a gnarly dive. Uh -huh. like the stage always smelled bad. You barely had room. The the stage smelled bad if you if you remember because you had the bands loaded in from the side because yes. the stage was right there. The bathroom was the, right beside the right, stage. And it was the guy's bathroom was right oh, there. And God. it was just, it was one of those urinal troughs. Yes. There was not even a toilet for the guys. I mean, you had, and then the women's bathroom <laughs> was like, here's the stage, here's the guys. The women's one was like right here. So no matter what, you're on stage, you're fucking smelling. Ugh. All of it. And dude, playing there in the summer, there was no air conditioning <laughs> on there. You, know, you get up there, dude, I straight up, there's a picture of me. I'd have to find it, but I'm playing bass like this. Because <laughs> I had to set up next, because uh, Smiley had lengthened out his rack, because he started getting more money went from playing you know just a regular setup to a rack yeah and i kept getting pushed further and further and i'm set up literally here's the fucking doorway at the berlin to the men's bathroom i'm right here <laughs> all it, i love playing that place they always paid us we always sold merch yeah. it's always, packed. always packed always packed always packed. a rowdy fucking crowd mm -hmm. rowdy dude. fun yeah stiff drinks like i always had a good time there but whew, that smell that was <laughs> Must have been harbor and corpses. And <laughs> back. Another place I always like playing, and I don't, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever played there, it, uh, O'Sullivan's Pub. That sounds like a we place. did one time, and for some I got the flyer hanging on my wall, and that was back in '14, and and that was they had a bench 
in the back mm -hmm. of the stage. So if I remember correctly, Dave sat up in front of that bench and Scotty and They set their amps up. I think they put them up on, on the bench. bench. That and Dave had no problem here. And Mikey <laughs> was kind of set beside, I think, and we were all standing in front, of, uh, standing in front of the drum mm -hmm. riser and stuff. And I'll never forget. <laughs> uh, Sam Garland was there, and he was making funny faces and doing shit to get me laughing at the time. And all I. And, I'm trying to belt this song out, and he's over there doing dumb shit, and I just had to stop <laughs> for a second and just laugh my ass off. <laughs> and I saw him after the show, I was like, you're a dick, dude. Yeah, but yeah, he just started laughing, and I started laughing. He's, he's a funny dude. I take my glasses off at a lot of shows. Just because so people, people pull so them so out. Because you can't see. When I was playing in Montreal, fucking, we'd always get my buddy Levi. I don't know if you, Levi Kennedy. Yes, I have to see his face. Yeah, you probably. Oh, I'm sure it. I've seen. Um, he would just get in front of me and make the stupidest faces and yell shit at me. So, like, it started just getting. All right, now I can't now fucking I can't see, see you. See so. It, yeah, that was when he started humping the trash can or something <laughs> like that. Point in time, so I had to stop for a second. Like, <laughs> people fuck with you like that when you're playing drums? I'm in a zone to where if something like that does happen, I just kind of keep keep my eyes on the drums. Yeah. Right? That that way. Way. <laughs> I know I ain't getting intimidated or getting... Uh, the drums help you focus on yes. not the, what's going I on. I like fucking with my drummer. That's why I was asking. <laughs> I try not to because if, if I'm singing and drumming at the same time, that, then if I see something like that, I'm screwed. <laughs> And I remember in one time, as, as far as that, when we played, when we opened up for Warfather back in 14. I, re I was there at that show, I remember that show. That strobe light. Yeah. It was flickering so fast. And I'm sitting here t trying to concentrate in it all. It was like, Control making me want to pass out. Oh, shit. Like, I wanted to, kind of like that episode of Star Trek where Kirk's fucking laid back in that chair and that thing. Yeah. And he's like, ah, ah. And that's all I could think of. And at the end of the song, I had told Jeremy, I was like, dude, have somebody shut that strobe off. That shit was, it was almost like making me sick. And I was like, I, I couldn't do it. Mm. But. No, that shit, that shit fucks with me too. Definitely. If, if you had to, throw out a favorite place to play, be it Muncie, Indy, or any, wherever you've played. Uh, that's tough. Or top, you can even do like a top three thing. <laughs> the place we played at in Ybor City, the Cuban Club, that's what it was called, the Cuban Club. That was fun. That was fun. And, that, uh, and of course, hometown. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see, let's see, that will always be one of yeah. my favorites. Um, wow. That's kind of tough. Uh, that's kind of hard to narrow it down, dude. Because <laughs> we've good. played a lot of good places and, you know, a lot of shitty places, too, but that's all part of the game. Yeah. Um, well, about the Cuban Club was so memorable. It was our first show in Florida, for one. And I said that's when Monstrosity and DSI were Fuck there. Yeah. I was just like, Fuck <laughs> yeah. Okay. Our first show in Florida and we're playing with these guys? Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Let me uh, try to hide my erection. Right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Dude, I, and, just, I didn't know, but I just realized that all those bands used to practice jam in the same like storage unit. Like you could, like back in the day, there was some storage place and all those bands yeah. practiced yeah. around uh, it. I've watched that in a, a DSI documentary. Yeah, I've just yeah, seen that. Talk, I, I never knew that, that shit. Yeah. That's so fucking cool. When we, we were all in Florida, this was always, this will always be cool. Um, we lost our jam space in Florida. So I was like, man, what are we going to do? Well, they, we saw an ad in one of the magazines at the record store Scotty worked at. Um, 
it was in Orlando, which was an hour away. We didn't really have no choice. So it was this big warehouse building that this guy had sectioned off into mm. different rooms with air conditioning, carpeting, and it almost as cost as much to you know to practice air as like living in a small house. So we went, you know, we managed to um, pull off a couple months, mm. and we had to share a room with a band called DNS, the Nervous System, and they were cool guys, only to find out that fucking Chuck Schaldner was fucking jamming above us. Dev was about jamming above us. Jesus. And I was just like, are you kidding me? So we showed up to we showed up to the to the jam space and Chuck was walking to the door and he opened the door for us and shit. And I'll never forget that. That's, that's just, the memories. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, and that's awesome. The whole time we were in Florida we managed to write one song. We could only pull one song out of ourselves, and that that was on uh, on the disgusted record. Uh, in, the song "Enslaved." Mm. That was all. That's a good one. Yeah. And we tried. I don't just something about it. We mm. just couldn't pull any songs out of ourselves, and that was the only one we could. The only one we wrote while we were down there. And. I don't know. It was uh, atmosphere. I don't know. It's probably the stress with the money and but that like, probably the probably in a lot of spot and being financially strapped. Mm. I mean, we managed to make it work as long as we could, mm. and maybe even being stifled by the greatness around you. Yeah, you know I mean the I mean? fact like, that fucking Chuck practiced above you, yeah. playing <laughs> show, like you said, fucking corpse and that freeze me out. We're at a show, like. I mean, you know, I need to write new songs. Like, he likes this song. Like, let, let me. <laughs> but I'll never trade those memories, too. It was, Florida was fun. Financially hard, but it was fun. Definitely fun. Mm -hmm. Getting to see the places we seen and playing with who we played with. And it's like, man. Yeah. That's sweet. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, Sean King told me a story. I don't know if you were involved in this one or not. They were going to play with uh, maybe like in Kent or something in New York. They got pulled over and uh, the cops were like, that. Well, there was like they were freaking out because they had like weed and cocaine, right? And like the fucking cops pulled them over and is like, no, we're not caring about that. We're just looking for uh, laws and H. And they're like laws, you know, laws rockets. They're, for some oh, reason, the cops were looking for like rocket launchers so their little piddly indiana you know they could move along but. <laughs> that was before me that was that was back in the that might have been around the time between ben ben yeah ben or, i think ben was ben with was them. there mm -hmm. jared southwick all right mm -hmm. jared um jared and sean and right around the time dave stater was in this was way before me mm -hmm. so yeah this was one actually when they were jamming on wheeling so yeah i remember those days and i remember hearing that story <laughs> <laughs> no band thing? i don't know i don't know i don't know if it was i think that was me uh because the the heroin the cops were looking for heroin and they were worried Nobody about the weed that. Yeah, they're just worried yeah. about weed. They're like, we got weed. They're like, we don't care about yeah, the weed. That's a, a minor, minor problem. Minor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But yeah, that was that was way before me. But I was hanging out with them guys a lot and hearing that story a lot because well, Lindell and Sean and Dave mm -hmm. were all living in the same house. And so yeah, I remember we Dave telling me about that living together and all that too. Oh, that house was fun. I had a good time. I mean, everybody was hanging out in one spot. Yeah, and you I could just you could you could show up sometimes and hang out, and then other times they'd be like, whatever they had going on, I was too young, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could live with my bandmates. I'm not trying to sound bad, but yeah. Oh, back if I lived with my drummer, we'd probably just be drunk all the time. Because when him and I get together, that's all that typically seems to happen is a bottle of whiskey gets broken out, and then. <laughs> Back in 2000, we had found a house that was five bedrooms, and that was, you know, Jason, his room was in the basement, mm -hmm. um, Mikey's room was on the main floor, 
and me and Scotty and Jeremy was up on the third floor, and we were jamming at least four days a week. Mm -hmm. He was a machine. And Jared Southwick lived next door to us, so Legion was practicing next door. Oh, yeah. So Scott, this was around the time he was joining Legion, so he would travel from our house. And, you know, he mm -hmm. would just go back and forth between the houses, yeah. and everything was there. Uh, those days were so fun. So fun. Yeah, I mean, it does kick up on productivity when you live, like, with the person, at least one person you're riding with or whatever, you know. I definitely, like, uh, that's, um, I've lived with Jeremiah before, but right now he lives in Louisville. He's, like, in a sober living house, and he just comes up on the weekends and we ride, but he's been doing real fucking good. That's awesome. But, uh, you know, th there's a lot of, that's always kind of, a, that can be an issue that puts big stagnant periods for people to, you know, sometimes talented people lean on stuff that hurts them more than helps them, you know. A good portion of disgust was written in that house. Definitely extracted was written in that house. And strategy was written in Jeremy's house afterwards. Oh, my legs asleep. Ooh. We just start winding down here, man. We're going on an hour and 35. Whatever you want. And that's to do, average north about for me an hour and a, between an hour and two hours, so hey, whatever you want to do, bud. Yeah. Oh, well, you got anything else you wanna add? Um, I guess I'm feeling back in my ass. Yeah. <laughs> like, beef's been laying on me the whole time, dude. Like I didn't want to move. You don't want to disrupt the cat. <laughs> <laughs> that's the key. <laughs> but um I said Necrophagus is not disbanded. I'll say we're just not active. But we are still a band. Um, Chronicles of the Apocalypse will be out sometime. Mm -hmm. um, New Legion will be out fairly soon once we get that finished up. And other than that, is just keeping it rolling. You throw any advice out to bands right now? Um. Just keep go. I mean, the only thing you can do is just keep practicing, keep practicing. Um, try to get any shows you can, even though they might be shitty. Somebody somewhere will be at one of those shows. Oh, well, shit. You know, these yeah. guys are, and shit could happen. You just gotta, you just gotta keep plugging. So we've been plugging for over 28 years. Um, as far as neck and Legion's been, I think, coming up on 30 years and. I know Dave and I talked about the 30 years for Legion, but I don't remember exactly because him and I talked for, I got three and a half hours of conversation out of Dave, which is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> way more than what you normally would get. So yeah, 30 That's years That's a lot later, of talking for Dave. I know. <laughs> he made the joke. He was like, uh, I'm not going to talk for the next six months now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave, he doesn't like to talk a lot, but you know. I just, it's the same thing with you, man, just being able to sit and listen to the history. And like I said with Kendra and Pat, too, like with Dave, dude, it was pretty much, we recorded in my garage, and he was like right across from me. And a lot of the time, dude, I'm just like sitting there just trying to soak it up. And I would redraw the conversation back to something he'd said because I'd want him to elaborate more on right. it. Right. And that's why I wanted to hear more about Cuban Club. I was like, yeah, I know uh, there's more to that. And so then. Awesome. Like I told you, getting to talk uh, with you, just being like one of the people, like I told you, when I started doing vocals, I, well, I watched what you were doing, you know, I, I listened to a lot of Legion, a lot of Necro when I was trying to figure wow. out my shit, fucking, you, you, Necro's the reason I got into local music, stumbling into a fucking cabin, when your triggers aren't working, there's no PA. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, the PA was working enough for vocal. That was about it. But uh, it's the same for me. Stumbling into a Legion show, mm -hmm. and listening to the first fucking, you know, hearing the first Legion demo, and just like, oh my god, this shit exists in Bunsy. I'm yeah. just saying that's that was the fuel for the fire. And well, I know Sean feels that way too. Right? Yeah, I saw I saw Hellwinkle at Flying Tomato, yeah, well, and then uh, I think. Uh, Within a short period of time, you know, um, I was allowed to go down there for shows by myself on my mountain bike. I was in like seventh grade, <laughs> and we'd go down to the village all the time and catch uh, Legion shows. And there was like a punk 
band or two, like How Now Brown Cow or some shit <laughs> back then. <laughs> it's way back, like 96. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Man, so I mean, you got, and you got a lot of people that were inspired and started creating music just because like you and Dave and Starkey and Drew. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. Man. Well, like I told you, man, just Facebook shares alone, dude, it kind of caught me off guard. Like, yeah. I have 70 likes and, like, 400 engagements on just a promo picture of you. Or, like, That's the crazy. video with Dave is, like, a couple, like 400 views and the video of Pat's, cut like, 280-something. The one with Kendra, too's couple hundred a piece also so there's people that pay attention and care man that's and that's awesome, that's, man. that's a big reason i wanted to do this was it's to nice get... to know that people still you know that people are paying attention and that's mm -hmm. that's a big inspiration for me right now it is. it's like okay well it's, at least it ain't dead mm -hmm. it's, you know right i, mean, I, I can kind of feel yeah, some yeah. inspiration i want to help you guys with distribution too like well i want to talk about that more like for sure like print printing stuff for you and as far as that, the forever lost, real real, got damaged at the Wheeling House. Oh, oh. and I hate it. But we threw it back there, calling it a real to real. Yeah. yeah, it was a real to real. And real analog recording. That because we recorded that back in '94 at the same place Legion recorded Blissful Misery, mm -hmm. and we had the re or had the real, and it got water damaged. That's a bitch. Yeah. But, you know, we, it, it is what it is. Matter of fact, we still got, we paid for 20 hours of recording time and used 17, so. <laughs> he better still have three <laughs> hours of credit for us since 94. <laughs> but, yeah, it is what it is. You know, we still got, we got plenty of CDs. Mm -hmm. you know, it ain't going to be the original, original, but hey, it's still there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm still listening to the Disgusted CD Starkey gave me 20 fucking years ago. Hey, so I don't have the case don't anymore, have. but I still have the CD. We might still have some I, uh, somewhere. I, I have, like, the old scratch ones like that, you know, but I actually re-upped on, on a few necro necrophagus albums when uh, Dan had his place open downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan. I went through there one day and found, like, a bunch of, like, DSI Cannibal Corpse original pressings. Still in the shrink wrap for the for the normal price and bought it all. Still, Damn. so I'd never opened it. Dan was such a good dude. Yeah, he was. Rest in peace, Dan. Yeah, definitely. That's a local music outlet there too. Mm -hmm. He let us sell our shit there. We could put our flyers there. He didn't. He didn't care. He was just supported. Yeah. And he mm -hmm. had the best like underground extreme metal like so, section still like yeah. that and I, even i've traveled all over now to the east coast to the west coast you know for everywhere and the record stores in muncie have more metal and like in general mm -hmm. like, in indianapolis too but like when you go out there you, you're thinking this is going to be sick they're going to have all kinds of good metal no i, I miss dance like <laughs> It, he did. That's what I like about VGR. He bought Travis bought a lot of a lot of that. A lot. I remember of being. Stuff. I he was there the, shopping when he got the phone yeah, call to come to the basement. Yeah, he bought a lot of Dan stuff. Mm -hmm. and Travis, dude, his selection. Uh, he has a pretty good selection. I go there. You can buy my stuff there. Yeah. It's the only place you can buy my stuff, other than for me. Right. So I'm playing. I mean, Obviously, you guys never probably played on VGR's lawn, but that was always a fun thing for us to do, too. It'd be, I don't think we had. It'd be something to look into when, when we come back, too, for shows, because uh, that that is a cool spot. It's, it's like, you remember where FN Music used to be? Uh, that was behind Subway? Uh, this was like a 90s record store that was over there. You could smoke pot inside. <laughs> I'm having problems. But it's in the, it's that same block, so mm -hmm. it's like right on campus outside. It'd be a cool show. Yeah, that'd be definitely something cool. Oh, oh, oh. okay, I do remember because we we played a neck played there a, a time or two. I think and, so. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure Legion was there too, and that was before. Okay, yeah, I it's do. It's where like Dave have... Brocky experience came through when right. when Guar couldn't wear their masks and they played there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I do remember that. 
It was a cool spot. A guy named Chris ran it. I can't remember who, what his last name was, but... Okay, yes, I think I can remember now. Well, VGR is like the same lawn or whatever. Mm -hmm. VGR is in the house that the dude lived in that owned the shop. So like where the after parties would be is where that record store is now, so... Okay. Yeah, you... It'd just be something fun for y'all to just kind of recut our yeah. teeth. And yeah, get back exactly. Into and they've got a good vinyl selection in there, metal, for yeah. sure. I just bought a bunch of Carcass EP, like the Peel Sessions and shit there. Yeah. All right, come down here. Uh, you can check out Legion and Necrophagus, Legion Bandcamp, Dark Horizon, YouTube, Facebook. You guys got an Instagram, I'm pretty sure. I, at least I see a picture, I don't know. I, 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 the last it's day probably probably because, yeah, I yeah. haven't seen it. Uh, you can search them up on YouTube. Um, you want physical copies of shit, you're going to have to yeah, hit up a band Dave. member. Yeah. Hit up Dave. Uh, Mandel keeps a lot of the ne Necro stuff. Yeah, lot he's of got a lot of it. So you want Necro, I'm sure disgusted and probably has all the... Because uh, uh, he's who I got the tape from I was telling you about. He, he's got the files and um, he can just print all the CDs as mm. he needs them. So nice. Are there shirts? Shirts? No, we haven't had shirts in a while. But uh, definitely, as far as I know, Lindell CD machine works. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, if you just have to get a hold of him and he can print you know, yeah. something as you need it, you know, that way he's not got a whole lot of surplus mm -hmm. and he can just print as you need. I'm going to have to hit him up and freshen my collection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm pretty sure he can do the cover art on the CD mm -hmm. too. So. All right, well, appreciate you being the last right, guest for this season. Me. Definitely appreciate it. This has been fun. Oh yeah, it was nice catching up and just getting able to talk about all kinds of shit. Like That's it's what I'm fun. Saying. Cracking uh, open some history. Look up the Muncie Music Scene on Instagram, Muncie Music Scene seven six five. Uh, Facebook the Muncie Music. Yeah, Facebook the Muncie Music Scene. And uh, this will, video will also be on YouTube, but it will be under my band's page because I'm lazy and don't want to start another fucking YouTube right, channel. So check that out. The band, the YouTube page is Cocaine Culture, but you'll find the Muncie Music Scene videos on there. And we we'll sign off now. I still haven't figured out a good way to end. Okay, that works. <laughs>